Okay. Uh, my name is Alicia Walker and I'm calling this meeting to order as co-chair. Governor Baker's March 12 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the working group. Given that we have a quorum present, I am calling the June 10th, 2021 meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to order at 5.34 p.m. I will call upon each member of the working group by name. At that time, they should unmute their mic and say present. This will indicate that they can hear me and we can hear them. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Ms. Pat Ananabaku? Here. Yeah. Ms. Deborah Ferreira? Here. Yeah. Mr. Russ Vernon Jones? Present. Ms. Tashina Bowman? Here. Yeah. Ms. Brianna Owen? Here. OK. Um, so I want to take a couple of minutes to review the agenda. Um, typically, we have public comment first, but just because we have um, Mr. Balkelman, the town manager here tonight for a limited amount of time, I'm going to suspend public comment to a little bit later in the meeting to give us time to discuss some of um, the time sensitive issues while we do have him present. Um, so on our agenda today, we do have that public comment will come later, reports by any members of the Community Safety Working Group, um, our press release and other communications that we've been working on with the community and with the town council, strategy on moving forward with the second half of our charge, an extension for the second half of our charge, and written materials for the second half of our charge, the second part of um, the second phase of the IFB, town forums, and then lastly, we'll double back to um, reconsidering our summer schedule. So I just wanted to open the floor to um, discuss the second half of our charge and our extension just first before we move forward while Mr. Bachelman is here, as well as any questions we have on the um, IFB and that um, portion of the second part of our charge. Um, so I just wanted to open the floor. I know there were a couple of members who had pre-existing questions. Ms. Ferreira and then Ms. Owen. So I guess for me, the, the more pressing questions while Mr. Bachman is on is just figuring out um, the extension. You know, I know last time when Mr. Bachman was here, he said that um, the town council will be presenting this two kind of August dates that, that they'll meet. And so, um, but I was thinking more so the later one, like the 23rd of August, that maybe we could have our, our recommendation for the second part of the charge done um, before then so that they could present to the town council on the 23rd of August. Um, so if that would be the case, let's say, um, by when should we give you, should we still, cause I'm still fuzzy about the order. Should we still give you the rec, do we need to give you the recommendations beforehand? Do we give the recommendations to you and the town council on the 23rd? What would be the process? I guess would be my question. Um, okay, talk. Um, so it, it's a really good question. So uh, I think with the previous section, it was extended six weeks to and I th the thing that was different about the, the part A was because of the budget request and I had budget deadlines. That doesn't exist for this. So we don't have to think about that preliminary action because I had a May 1st budget deadline I was trying to hit, uh, but we went to May 15th. So I think um, shooting, you know, it, so that's, that needs to add like six weeks onto where you are today, basically to get to mid August, I think. Uh, so I think it, I think it would be, ideal to shoot for the August 23rd town council meeting. Um, and and um, so as I, as when I looked at this, when I set, when I wrote the charge, um, I was looking at two big things and then a third thing came up. And so I wanna just sort of identify that. The first was setting up the, the um, um, community responder program. And I think that that's been done and it's been, um, it's not, I know it's not at the funding level that the, the working group is, is seeking and you will continue to advocate for that. Um, but I think that we're really on target to get this moving forward. Um, you know, we have a good group that's going to work. I'm really th thrilled that the co-chairs have volunteered to participate in this and the forming of it. There's a lot of details as we start talking more, you uncover 
lots of more details that this group will have to work out and you know, Ms. Moisten will be part of that as well. So I think that will move forward and, um, you know, ensuring funding, you know, getting the 90,000 from the uh, state, from the Senator Comerford. She also mentioned today, I was on the call with her, two other grant programs we could get to get this program. One of them, she said, would be perfect for this program because it's different. Our program is different than a lot of the co-responder programs that people are setting up. So I think we have lots of good opportunities and, and our staff is excited about this. Uh, the second one was to do the um, the resident oversight board, you know, the committee that I think that was uh, what we had talked about was to get what is that group going to look like in terms of um, overseeing the, um, you know, the complaint process and, and all the things that have popped up that that we've heard testimony about with the police department and what's that look like and that's got a lot of complications too and I think the success of that again is going to make sure that the you know we've got all the players involved who are going to be working with it you know the police chief I think is key to having this be successful and um, he understands how all the policies work the interactions um, you know we know that there are things that will come in that we aren't aware of you know issues that have that will people have been felt uncomfortable bringing to the police um, previously under the the old way and so setting up that group and what that group's charge is going to be and what types of things and who should be on that committee is really a big thing so if we come out with a community responder and a resident oversight board and then i can tell you today the finance committee voted to recommend and this is not in your bailiwick but it's it's relevant i think um to v vote uh we working with our finance director um came up with a way to fund reparations uh, establish a reparations fund that would have some money that would go into it every year and then having a all this the details need to be worked out having a group that would then help to distribute those funds in the way that they think so and so as I look at this I feel like we're making I mean just in the last year made some real tangible progress and I think if we can my goal on this is to get the resident oversight board up and running um this fall is, and, and get that get the work on the charge for that. So I, I guess just the follow up. Yeah, I mean, thank you for clarifying, you know, your goals and everything. But you know, again, like I had said, like last week, I think we're going to go a, a lot more beyond that, though, uh, besides just the oversight board. And, and of course, we are going to provide more details to the oversight board. That's one of the things that's in that consulting IFB phase. But you know, my interest, and I'll just speak for myself, you know, because I know we still need to discuss it, is to kind of go beyond that in terms of sharing um, other um, areas of reform um, for, for the APD. So I guess, so then since there, there aren't those kind of same um, co constricted kind of timelines because of the budget. So let's say if we are presenting to the town council on the 23rd, um, you know, should we give it to you, give you the recommendations? I guess we'd have to kind of give the town council that information anyway prior to. So yeah. let's say maybe the Monday before, like the 16th, we would kind of. I think they would welcome. Yeah, I th let me just look at my calendar. Yeah, August 16th is the um, Monday before the 23rd. I think they would welcome that, that, you know, the 16th would be a good timing for that. So anyway, I was just trying to kind of work out some of the stuff, obviously, just to present it to the CSWG so that then we could talk further. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think Ms. Owen had a hand and then Ms. Pat. Yeah, so I did get a chance to look over at the IFB over the weekend, and I was wondering if there was funding available for consulting because the IFB, um, again, I do agree with Ms. Pereira, there's going to be a lot of work besides the resident oversight board and I do think we, we're probably going to need help with that. So I think we should look at what is the additional work that's um, that you're wanting to do and talk about what um, what's, the, what's the time frame what can we get done in the period that we have. So I think you know what I you know what I'm looking for is the next phase is to get it the resident oversight board and I think that in and of itself is a pretty big task. I know there's a lot of other work that needs to be done. But whether I don't think it's realistic to say we can get this done over the next you know two months or whatever we have between now and August. So I think I think you want to be realistic about what we can do because we're not going to get everything done, and there's going to be a lot more work that has to be done in the future. So 
um, you know, I, I, I think I, I'm not encouraging you to, to expand the scope of what is, needs to be done. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm hoping that you'll um, be going with the goal where uh, of getting the resident oversight board going. Yeah, kind of as a follow up to that, um, are, is our charge going to be extended? Because it seems after watching the last town council meeting, it kind of seems like council members are interested in reform within the police department. So I don't think I don't feel like we'd be doing our full charge if we just did the resident oversight. Like Shalini said that she was very interested in police practices being reviewed and other council members too. So I just like, are we going to have more time? Is the CSWG going to continue so that we can get that work done? Well, I think that the the CSWG has its charge. If there is a successor group that needs to be formed, and I think there is a conversation to be had on that, and what is its re what's its relation to the resident over to the I think we're called the resident oversight board. What is the relation between their role? Is it that is it that group that's doing it? I mean, I think um, I think I said last time there's a lot of built up uh, a lot of institutional knowledge already with this group, and so seeing some con continuity. Is really important. So, but I don't know what the successor group. There's, there's, um, you know, we we have a reparations uh, committee that's going to be established. Uh, the I think there's some other groups that are being recommended to be established, and I think we need to really look at this as a town in terms of what is our structure going to be. Miss Pack. So first, I want to, you know. Thank you, um, the top manager for the reparation fund. I know your heart is in a good place, even though there's a lot, you know, that needs to be done in terms of what CSWG has recommended. So a couple of things that I have, I personally do not think that August is enough time for us to recommend complete our um, task for part B, that's not going to happen. That's not enough time. And I do not see, I mean, we have very capable um, CSWG uh, members that I think we need help. I mean, we need to do a thorough digging on the charge uh, for part B. So I'm very concerned in terms of time frame, having it done by end of August, that's not going to happen. We don't have enough time. And we do need help. We need, we need um, an organization to do the research, do the work, because if we just recommend something, the way that the town council operates and no offense, you know, they will not take us seriously. We need to be able to back up our recommendation very well. And I don't think, you know, just our committee alone um, we'll be able to do it. In terms of the, um, the future of CSWG um, in the future, I, one thing for the reparation group is only for black, that's a black group. The difference with this group is we are BIPOC group, mm -hmm. multiracial uh, uh, group. It's very, very critical. Mm -hmm. And also the successor of CSWG should be people who are already entrenched in this work to continue. Mm -hmm. I've heard through Grapevine, other groups who are vying for, you know, if there's no more CSWG, what about their group? So I'm hearing things also um, through Grapevine, but whatever the town council and you, you know, consider in the future, this core group has, has done incredible amount of work and we want to see the end, not the end, but to, to make sure that the work that we've done is being implemented and hold people accountable. So that's all I want to say for now. Thank you, Ms. Pat. I think I had Ms. Ferreira and then Mr. Vernon Jones. So, I mean, I, I, I definitely hear Ms. Pat in terms of what you said. I mean, obviously, if, if there's a way to kind of go beyond August um, a timeline, you know, I would welcome that. But I know that before, beforehand, Mr. Bachman has kind of kept us, you know, strict to the timeline. And I don't want to miss the opportunity. I guess that's the thing, you know. Obviously, if we can go beyond August, yes. But if, but if we can't, 
then I want us to, to be able to, you know, obviously we have to do that with Part A, right? It was a rush job as we know it. We, we would, we should have had like a year to kind of do that, but they didn't give us a year. <laughs> they gave us, you know, six months or whatever it was. So, um, so that's the thing, but, but part two, I mean, I hear you, Mr. Bachman in terms of the oversight board, but again, there's a lot more and we need to, and, and we're going to discuss it because we already had the IFB draft. And then I have a bunch of other areas that, that needs to kind of be plucked in that we have said at the end of our part A um, report that we are going to be looking into. So that has to be plugged into the IFB to um, uh, report. So um, there's a lot. That, that needs to be done and we need to do it. I'm not going to, for me, I'm not just interested on the oversight board. It's the oversight board and all those other things that are very key in terms of APD. And if we don't reach all those other things, we would, will not have done our job uh, correctly and thoroughly. So I'm, I'm very interested in focusing on all of the above. And yes, we do need, we do need the help. We need the consulting help. We, we do, and we'll spell it out to you once we go over it. We'll share you, you know, we'll send the email over in terms of why it is that we need the consulting help and that why it's going to be key. So my thing for you is how can you find the money so that we can make this happen? Mr. Vernon Jones. Um, I appreciate that. Paul, in your mind, the second part of the charge may have framed as uh, the resident oversight board, but the charge does refer to recommending policy changes and organizational changes, and also refers to our uh, outreaching to the community and finding problems and identifying solutions to them. Um, and I think as you've been hearing from us, that oversight board. Uh, and I guess now I get the question that I'd like to ask is, if we identify things that could, what would be the mechanism? Are we, is an IFB the only way to proceed to get um, help or are there ways to hire people on an hourly rate to are there ways to uh, get Mr. three quotes and move Jones forward more quickly? Crazy. Yeah, my my internet my internet may not be that good uh, tonight. Um, but I think our, our question is both, you know, can you find money, but also what's the the way forward that would let us, you know, should we be asking for three quotes? for something as a quicker way to uh, find a consultant? Um, or is the IFB process the only one uh, that's available for us to get some help? So no, there are different ways you can procure services. Um, so IFB is one, RFP, but it, RFP is over $50,000 and that, that takes on a different um, approach and that that's usually takes a longer period of time. Um, so, in terms of, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, or, you know, I, I knew what I had in my mind when I wrote the charge. And so, and this is an advisory to the, to the manager. And what I'm, we're, I'm looking at is what we can set up this year and what, what is our capacity as a town to move. And I, and I, and I really feel the urgency that the working group is bringing, which is really good. Um, and trying to match it up with, um, our ability specifically through our police department, our police chief of being able to implement the things that we're recommending. And I think that's the difference here. We wanna get things that we're, we can implement and make change, um, putting a lot of, I really wanna put that, at, that's where I really wanna shift our focus is the implementation, not just, um, you know, we've spent a lot of time studying things, but I think, you know, I think you've, you did a, a great, great job yourselves actually on the, um, on the, on the, on part A of the report. If we get to the second part, we get the resident oversight board. I'm thinking of real tangible things. And I, maybe because I'm a manager and, um, you know, not a politician or something like that, but it's, but it's, I'm looking at what can we get in place that we, I feel are really going to make a difference. And I think that, um, 
and I think there's a lot more work just as uh, Ms. Ferrara has been saying is that, holy crap, dude, well, I'm sorry, uh, there's a ton of stuff to be done. And, um, and all those things that you mentioned are really crucial because I think this, that's the thing that's gonna influence, that's gonna impact um, people of color the most. I think that, I think the um, CREST program is gonna have some impact, but I think the policies are, are you know, the, the oversight board and all that is the next phase. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, but um, Mr. Bachman, I mean, I, I feel, again, so so then what was the point of us spending all the time making the recommendations if then what you all do is just pick whatever it is you think is going to be most important to put into play? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what all the recommendations that we made for Part A, those were all critical and those were all important based on what the work we did. Mm -hmm. And then whatever recommendations we're going to be making for part B, those are going to be all important based on what we're hearing from, from the community and what we're hearing from the, 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 the residents in Amherst and what it is that they need. So mm -hmm. to kind of just single out the oversight board as, okay, that's the thing that we're going to put in place. That really just showcases then that, okay, everything else is a waste of time. That's basically what you're mm -hmm. telling me. And that the oversight board is what you all will spend time on, just like the press program is what you all will spend some time on because you didn't even fund that fully, but at least you gave some money to it. So, okay, the press program and the oversight board, okay, everything else is just, you know, words on a, on a paper. That, that's what I'm hearing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Mr. Bachelman, if you would like to respond to that, and then I'll go to another. Yeah, I, I know you have other members with their hands up, so I appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I think one of the things as I think about how we implement things is, you know, one of the other recommendations was a DEI uh, director and getting, you know, getting that, posi that position up and running and involved is really crucial too. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we can manage all these changes that are happening in a relatively short period of time um, and getting the right people to help implement them. And right now we're using existing staff, but we will have a uh, dedicated uh, uh, DEI coordinator and a, and a full-time DEI director who's able to be more owner, take more ownership of some of these things as well. Thank you, Mr. Bachelman. I think we had Ms. Ellen and then Ms. Bowman. Um, I think Ms. Bowman had her hand up if she wants to go first. Okay, Ms. Bowman. Um, so this continues to be very familiar space for me. Um, you have BIPOC people telling you what they need and you have non-BIPOC people picking and choosing what they get. Just sit with that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Because I think this community of BIPOC people have spoken so loud and have expressed themselves so clearly. And I watched the meeting from Monday and I'm listening to a whole bunch of white people picking and choosing what feels comfortable for them. This is not a comfortable thing. This whole situation is not a comfortable thing. And let me tell you, as a person of color, I have never been comfortable. I did not grow up comfortable. I grew up being judged. I grew up being, you know, given little bits and crannies of things when it was convenient for the white people around me. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm game, shame on the town of Amherst because that's exactly what you're doing. You're picking and choosing what feels comfortable for you. And we have been clear and we have been very precise about what we need, what the need is of this community. I sat there and I watched the meeting on Monday and I was like, yo, they are talking about a whole bunch of things that have nothing, like literally, um, I believe her name was Sarah, had to bring y'all back to, to recognize that this is about the BIPOC community. That is the 
first part of this whole thing is about the BIPOC community. It's not about mental health awareness. It's not about, you know, this and the other. Like, you literally are losing your police department to UMass. Do you realize that? So you're cutting, you're not giving us the funding we need, but you're going to lose your police department to UMass and the crap that those students do on a regular basis, every semester that they're here, getting, you're getting calls from UMass, you're getting calls from, you know, and now we're, now Amherst is going to have to take care of that, but you won't fund us. You won't invest in the, in the people that actually live in this town. You invest in students and making sure that those students are being taken care of and being managed and making sure that they're, you know, that zoo over there is being taken care of, but you won't take care of the residents of your town. I don't care how uncomfortable it makes you. I don't care who is like crying in the wind at this point, because I've been sitting back crying in the wind long enough. I've watched my people sit back and cry in the wind long enough. Get it together. It needs to be uncomfortable. It needs to be in the faces of everybody. You need to put your residents before your students. Even the police department sat there and was like, look, we don't need all this extra. We don't need, we have to deal with all this other stuff, these other things. We need this program. Even they're saying they need this program. And, and, and it's like, it almost feels like the, even the police understand that this program is necessary more than the finance committee, more than the town manager, more than, you know, the, the town committee. That's what, it, that's what it looks like to me. Because the thing is, is that you can go and look at all these other programs and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, Amos is very unique. We're very unique. We don't necessarily operate the same and we don't have the same needs. We have community members who like me, who will come out and speak. And then we have community members who don't. And the thing is, is that the community members who have taken the route to go out and speak and tell their stories and, and, and tell their experiences, you guys have come, you guys have systematically dismiss them. And then you're gonna sit there and pick and choose what you think is best for us. That is literally what systemic racism is about. That is literally what it's about, is that you, I can tell you that you're hurting me and you will pick and choose. Well, this didn't hurt so bad. Oh, you just misinterpreted what, no, I'm on the receiving end of it. It hurts the way I say it hurts. And you need to sit and feel that for a minute. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Ms. Owen and then Ms. Ananabaku. Um, yeah, so my question for the town manager, I was a little, I was very thrown off by the meeting on Monday as well. I was very thrown off that Mary Beth, I think her name was, was answering so many questions about different responder models when the community safety working group has been doing the research for the last six months and working alongside consultants. I thought it was odd that Olympia Washington was brought up as like <laughs> the model that we're comparing Amherst to. I brought that I brought that same model to the group's attention months ago to talk about grants and was told that grants aren't within reach. And after doing some research today, that program was started as a pilot, but it was started at $1.5 million which is way more funding than Amherst is willing to give Crass. And additionally, on their website, they're under their funding, their first suggestion to make alternative safety programs work is to cut the police budget. That's on their website, like their official Vera Behavioral Health Crisis Alternative website. And I just wanted to ask directly, um, what, like, what applications or surveying needs to happen to customize this program, Crest to Amherst? Because I heard that loosely being spoken about, and I just feel like the CSWG has talked about what's not working and what it, what will work custom for Amherst. So I was just a little bit confused about that. And I think, again, the continuation of this group could bridge the gap rather than continuous forums that happen in Amherst, but nothing, nothing comes of them. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Um, Ms. Pat? So 
I got a um, couple text messages. And the issue of having reparation leaders to either replace the SWG or be the one when, you know, I have people who are not black who just texted me and they wanted me to ask the town manager that blacks are not the only minority group in this town. Mm -hmm. So if we are going to use reparation leadership to replace BIPOC, that will be pitting one group to another. And the message I got from my text is, don't let that happen. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just wanted to convey that to everybody that we, we, for us to be mindful that minority groups were not fighting against each other because Asian American can say, where is our own reparation? Native American will come, Hispanic group and so on and so forth. So. CSWG needs to be replaced by multiracial BIPOC folks, the people who are currently on it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Bachelman? Yeah, thank you. So I, 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 I hope I didn't confuse on that. So I, I just, the reparations is a separate lane, se separate group, separate organization, uh, separate committee that is being proposed to be set up. Uh, so not to be confused with what has to happen on the on the public safety community safety front. So yes, definitely d two different things, two different things. Um, there, I mean, there may be overlap, but maybe not, I don't know. Um, but the, the intention is not that, that there would not be overlap of mission uh, between the two. Um, and um, for Ms. Ms. Owen, you know, where we are at this point is, how now that we want to create and we have fund or when the council votes we will have funding to create a crest program there are a lot of details to work out in terms of protocols and um you know hiring practices and all the things that we need to do and so I, what i find to have a successful program implemented which is the goal of our entire team is to involve the people who are you know, who will be working most closely with it, the fire chief, the police chief, the um, HR, finance, um, all the all the key people. And I'm, that's why I'm so thrilled that, you know, like I said at the beginning, was that you are willing to participate as well to get into the nitty gritty about how does it actually set up and work? It takes a lot of time and effort to do this. It's not going to be an easy task um, to pull it all together. So we have an actual program with people responding to calls. And that's our our goal. And, you know, I, th I think, you know, you know, I've had experience in, in this, in doing this kind of work and it takes, a, it takes time and effort. Um, and I don't think, you know, you know, I think there's, you know, we don't look at one community as the model, but we can learn from lots of different communities and from other people. So that's where, um, you know, I'm about implementation right now, getting the funding in place, which you and getting the vision set, which you have done, getting the funding in place, uh, getting the people, uh, getting the DEI director in place is going to be a help, a help as well. So we have more dedicated time to the work um, and then moving forward on it. I guess I would just appreciate going forward if um, some representation from the CSWG could be at conversations like what happened at the town council meeting. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I've never seen Mary Beth in the audience. I've never heard her during public comment. And we've been studying community safety and the intersectional issues for the last six months. And I do think that if not us, maybe the consultants, because they are experienced professionals who did the work for us. Yeah, well, I think I think we do have to recognize that town officials have some experience as well, and um, that that we can bring that to the table as well for during implementation. That's the. I'm sorry. No, yeah, with you. Yes, I understand. I agree. So um, I know you have to leave, and I'll mm -hmm. be very brief, um, Mr. Bachman. So, what is the reasoning why um, the town will not fund? the youth program center and also the BIPOC center because this is directly just like what Fashina had you know referenced before this is what 
our people, my people are saying, we want. And then people in position of power is saying, we, got, we get to uh, uh, pick and choose. So what is the reason for not wanting to fund the two centers? I'm just curious. And how do you think not having a 24 seven crest will even work? I mean, I need help you explaining that to me because I don't, I don't get it. It's a slap in our face because we say we need a safe place. And almost all white town council just ignored and also um, the uh, finance committee ignore all that. That's what we need. We don't have a safe place in this town. Yep. So I don't think it was, so I, I see what you're saying by it was ignored. I think these were new concepts that had not been really digested before. And I think they are now on the table where previously were, they were not on the table to have, have that discussion. Um, you know, in my mind, we do need a champion of like, that's where a DEI director would be helpful to help say, take that on and start to say, what are the steps necessary to get to that point? You know, identify space, identify funding sources, all that type of stuff, stuff as we get into a proposal for creating something new. Um, so. Yeah, I, 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 we addressed it in a, a very sort of um, way where it was like, yes, it's something that we have to look at, but it hasn't been, yes, we adopt it. You're right on that. Have you, have you confirmed about creating two departments? You said you have to reach out to Boston. I'm sorry, I missed that. You said um, you have to reach out to Boston, something like creating two departments. The, Press department and oh. also, have you done that or? No, no, it's, I'm sorry. I, um, to create a new department, it requires the town council to approve it. Oh, okay. it's, it doesn't require anything in Boston. Okay. Um, Ms. Bowman and then Mr. Vernon Jones. Um. So, so, first of all, um, my question is, who's determining what's needed? Like, because, like, we're saying that we need this, but clearly, it's not our choice. Like, we don't get to say what we need. Um, so I just want you to sit with that for a minute. Um, also, you know, one of my really, really big problems with this, like, whole thing with this, like, this idea of lack of money and, you know, then it's going to take all this training and this, that, and the other, and we're freaking out about that and whatever, whatever. Do you realize that most of the people who work for all these agencies that are already established are not BIPOC people. So you're literally just telling BIPOC people to trust more white people who have already screwed them over multiple times to go ahead and call this number and you're gonna have more white people in your business, in your life, in your everything, judging you. I, I just, I'm curious. I wanna know how that's gonna work because we're not calling police. So why the hell am I going to pick up the phone and call some agency that's full of a bunch of white people? I'm, I'm just curious because, you know, I heard a bunch of suggestions about, oh, we can work with CS, C, what is it? Um, like CSO. CSO and ServiceNet and all that stuff. But I walk in the, I walked in the door to those people before and they're a bunch of white people. You know, DCF, bunch of white people. And the few people of color who may work there, and they may not like that I'm saying this, are token. Because you know, if they make any ruckus, if they lift, if they raise their voice, if they make any scuffle, 
against what the white order is, they're going to get fired or reprimanded or so all the countless other things that are going to happen because all their supervisors and all their everybody's white above them. Like, do you, like, I just don't, like, I guess I'm frustrated because I really, 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 really get it so deeply that you have no clue. You have no clue what it's like to know that there's a service that you should be able to contact. But you know, if you contact that service, you may lose your children, you may go to jail, you may lose your, your, your livelihood on every level, and then add mental health stuff to it, add disability to it, because I'm coming to you as a person with a disability on top of it. Add all that stuff to it, and you're just like, oh, you know, this is getting taken away from me, that's getting taken away from me, now they want to take my kids, now they want to take my food. Like, for real. Where? Like, who's making the term determination? Again, like, you guys are policing Black bodies on every level. Do you not understand that? Do you not get that? Do you not? Like, I mean, clearly you don't because this wouldn't even, we wouldn't even be having this quite a talk. I mean, we wouldn't even be doing this right now. If you really, truly, in your deepest part of your heart understood that, understood that if I tell my kid to stop doing something, I automatically know there's a white person there judging me and deciding whether or not they're gonna pick up the phone and call DCF. I'm a good mom. My, my kids are go college bound. I have one kid that's in grad school right now. But every day I still look over my shoulder. Every day I have to be aware of every move I make, how I present myself out there in the world because every single moment I'm being judged. I cannot turn to my children and, be, and tell them to cut it out because I know that there's some person who's already ready to pick up the phone and call DCF on me. You want us to trust these people. You want us to put our faith in these people and you are literally not getting it. You are not understanding it. I can't even find a doctor who's a person of color. Like, I, I just like, you're not getting it. You are not getting it. The town council does not get it. They are not listening to us. They are not hearing us because they don't live it. They can go to a doctor and have a doctor totally understand where they're coming from. They can go to a store and not be followed around the store or a person be completely nice and kind and loving to them in the store. Whereas I would walk in the same store and be like, uh, immediately don't feel like I should be here. Turn around, walk out. Are you sure you can afford that? That is the tone in the voice. People of color are saying what they need. Flat out, period, end of story. The town is gonna get itself together and provide what they need or they're not. And the thing is, if they're not, then stop wasting our time. Like at no point have I heard you say, Look, this is, this is what I'm, this is what's going to happen. Like, I'm going to provide everything you need. This is my, this is my steps at providing everything you need. But you know what, what's interesting is one of the things that we have said that we need and that it seems like there's other support is that the CSWG should continue. And that has been said over and over and over again. And at no point, have, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you are literally picking and choosing what you think we need. We need the CSWG. We need that. This specific thing that we're doing right here, we need to continue doing this.
And not only that, but because all of us have invested so much time, because you know what? Like we can really get into it about details about this and how we're working every week doing this meeting plus multiple other meetings and what we're getting as a kickback for that, like a not kickback, a pay for that, what we're getting recognized for and how much time we're putting in, how much energy we're putting in and how other people are not doing this type of work who are not doing this, they don't live this every day. They don't have to live this every day. They don't have to think every day about what the next person next, the, the person of color in the house next to them, probably because it's not one, but aside from that, they don't have to think about what, what decisions they're making is affecting. Because you know what? Reality is, is that I'm looking and I'm like, yeah, I see some of these people on the board, on the, you know, the town council. I interact with a lot of people throughout my, you know, my dealings in Amherst. And a lot of those people, like, I can't say I've interacted with. I don't know how many of those people actually have people of color in their everyday life. I'm not talking about, oh, I'm having a party. I'm going to invite some person, you know, my one token per person of color over. I'm talking about, like, really have a relationship with a person of color that it has nothing to do with oh i'm friends with this person because they're a person of color just an organic relationship because i have white friends who i have organic relationships with and then i have white friends that i'm real really aware of that i am their token person I am, I just, I'm just going to keep rambling on, but you're not listening. Nobody, the town council, the finance committee, Mr. Bachman, you're not listening. You're not listening. You're not listening. You're picking and choosing what feels comfortable. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones and then Ms. Ferreira. Mr. Bach, <clears throat> Mr. Bachman, given the unique composition and role that the community safety working group plays, and the fact that there are issues directly within our charge that we cannot finish by August, why are you so resistant to continuing the CSWG beyond the end of August? So when I when I created the CSWG, what I wanted was the two address two, two things that we addressed one was a alternative responder program and the other is the resident oversight board um you know there are a lot of other things in the in in the charge i admit um but those are the two functional things that i was looking at if there is a successor group that you think should be a standing committee which i think is what we're going to um that would be a, a good thing to come out of the as a recommendation as well but that's where I'm, that's how I've envisioned the work of the community safety working group. And I think that was, that was you know, that's how I've, I've envisioned it when, we, when I wrote it last, last fall. Could you explain the difference between a standing committee and continuing the CSWG? I think a standing committee has um, like ongoing roles and responsibilities that, it would, and that are defined in terms of what they all actually do. It's not just gonna be studying things. Um, it'll have, and I think we're looking at the same thing with the Energy and Climate Action Committee as well. Uh, how are we going to implement in, integrate the work into the overall operations of the town? And I think this is a, a more narrow focus on community safety, and maybe it should be. Um, so, but I really need to leave. I am holding up a party, and not a party, a group of people, um, and um, so I have to excuse myself. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bachelman. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Vernon Jones, I'm not sure if you were finished with your comment. I was intentionally brief and I'm finished for now. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ferreira? Well, yeah, Mr. Bachelman, I guess, made, made the exit when he was. Um, he had to and everything. And I guess it was best for him so he wouldn't hear what I had to say. But, um, <laughs> you know, again, it's just, um, 
you know, the resistance is, is just ridiculous. You know, the resistance from the town council, the resistance from the finance committee, the resistance from Mr. Bachelman. Um, I mean, it, it, it's just shameful uh, because, you know, again, we've, we've, you know, done the work, we've put in, you know, the time, we've brought in the consultant, shown the data, <laughs> which is one of the things that they always say, show the data, right? Show the data. And there's still the resistance, right, in terms of putting things in place. Why? Because, again, it's systemic white, uh, racism, it's white privilege, it's whiteness, it's, you know, the things that we've had to deal with since slavery began 400 years ago, right? And that is what we are dealing with. And so for Mr. Barkerman to say, sit here and say that, well, when he wrote this charge, he was looking for a community responsible uh, group and an oversight group, then why did he... Why did he want us then? He already had an idea of what he wanted. How did he know we were going to come up with a community responder group? What we were charged with was char charged with looking at different models, but he didn't know whether we were going to say to adopt any of those models or to adopt anything. So for me, it was kind of, you know, really, um, I was really upset to hear him say that, you know, which that's what I was going to say if he was here, but he can, he can listen to it because it's recorded. Um, you know, it's, how can you say that you were looking for a, a community responder and oversight? You don't know what, you know, you gave us the charge and we were supposed to do the work, hear the community and come up with things that are responsive to the residents of Amherst focusing on the BIPOC community. And this is what we came up with. And the second part of the charge is not just on the oversight board. The second part of the charge is on all of what is stated on that charge, inclusive of the oversight board. And again, the fact that he's not hearing, right, and, and the town council and finance committee and that, all, everyone else not hearing that CSWG needs to continue because of the, the, the knowledge base that we already have, right, is again the fact, and I said it last week to Mr. Bachman, though, I said, you know, it's again, it's the fear because they don't want us to continue. Right? They don't want us to continue to push. They don't want us to continue to be truthful to say what it is that needs to happen. Again, it's not about us. It's about what the community is asking us to do. And that's what I keep on telling a lot of constituents, a lot of people that come in and, and talk to me. I'm like, it's not about me. This is about safety. This is about safety for the, for the for residents in Amherst, especially a BIPOC residents. And it's about us and uh, stopping feeling afraid. So it's okay for us to feel afraid, <laughs> but then everybody else can go about their business, right? And so now that we brought a plan and we made you know, a solid plan with data and everything else to back up, there's still the resistance, right? Because we have to continue to be in fear and, and continue to, to not feel safe. And then, you know, they can put this in place and not put that in place and it's A or B or C or, or whatever. I mean, it, it's just, it's shameful and it's, it's ridiculous, you know? Um, obviously I'm here because, you know, we gotta keep the, the, the you gotta keep going, you know, gotta keep going. But, but I, you know, I see it. Uh, and I know based on, on the other comments that you all have said, you all see it too. What's, what's happening. It's, it's clear as day. I mean, it's, not, not, nothing else to be said in terms of what what is happening here, and you know, for me, the, the truth is is what it is. So now it's how are we going to move forward? You know, to continue the fight. Thank you, Miss Ferreira. Miss Pat, sorry, Pat, you have to unmute. I, I apologize for that. I'm just wondering if we have any anyone in the audience who may want to speak or something like that, if you want to go back to the schedule, to the agenda item. Yes. Um, is that okay with all other members that I go back to public comment? We can double back. I'm sure we'll have some overlapping conversation. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go back to the public comment section of the agenda. If any members of the public would like to make a statement, please raise your hand. I will recognize you and ask Ms. Moisten to turn on your microphone. I ask that comments be limited to no more than three minutes. The working group will not be responding to your comments, but we will listen intently. 
Um, so it looks like we have Demetria Shabazz and she has her hand up. If you could bring her in, please, Ms. Moyston. Hello, I just want to once again say thank you to the Community Safety Working Group. Um, it's hard work uh, remaining persistent and uh, holding our elected officials and those uh, who are employed on our behalf to hold their feet to the fire. And so I commend you in doing so. Um, two points that came up tonight um, that struck me as areas that I hope you will continue to press and um, will bring the public uh, in to help uh, advocate along with you is, you know, it sounds like, because this is a, a sea change a bit, that the town manager has admitted that a diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, director will be added. Um, I think that is a, a, you know, a step in the right direction because uh, a few weeks ago, that was not something he seemed to um, include within his narrative. So I think that's a, a positive uh, move. You are right to question um, who will be in that position, who is qualified, to be in that position, what qualifications are needed. Um, the Seven Generations uh, Movement Collective, we uh, only had time to outline such um, a position, but it does need to be fleshed out more. And I think your group is uh, definitely uh, able and qualified to flesh that out. I would look to Cornell's uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion certificate program so you could see some of the qualifications um, that uh, someone of, of this stature is, uh, you know, on the very minimum. I'm talking the minimum because either it's going to, to have some uh, a background in uh, areas of social and behavioral work, but also policy uh maybe even law um and it's just uh circumscribing the bare minimum they would also need some experience in those areas so i don't want um the town to make short shrift of such a position it is a position that needs qualified applicants and needs a qualified person to really steer this forward in terms of a vision for five to 10 years. That is what modern contemporary towns and cities are doing because they see you know, far ahead of them that this world is changing and Western Mass will no longer remain this very uh, agricultural you know, <laughs> view of itself, um, you know, uh, but also very white. That is, that's not going to be for five to 10 years. It's going to be much more diverse. And with that diversity, it will be far richer. And I mean, not only in terms of culture, but financially, because with that diversity brings much more opportunity uh, and creativity. So I, I really hope that you will continue to press them on that. Um, and that the folks that they have in place to say, well, let's utilize the, the current staff. I think um, that's really shortchanging the, the, the BIPOC community. So you're, you're right to point that out. The other thing that Ms. Pat, and I'll, I'll finish there, uh, had pointed out about the compression of reparations. This is nothing new amongst uh, white communities and folks who are very short-sighted, they begin to compress uh, everything having to do with people of color. We are a heterogeneous, you know, uh, very diverse 
uh, within our diversity, right? It's not just one thing. We're never just one thing. And so it's really important that uh, folks understand that you create the narrative, right? You've already created it, but you continue to pound that narrative, which is really important because they haven't heard that here. Um, that, you know, when we talk about reparations, that is a separate issue. And we're talking about African descended people. When we're talking about what's going on with the CSWG, you know, it's like the folks we interviewed. We interviewed uh, BIPOC folk. We interviewed um, folk, you know, that had different uh, languages as their first language. We interviewed uh, Asian Americans. Um, we interviewed what represents in terms of racial, ethnic, and language diversity. Uh, we, we interviewed those folks here in Amherst. And I think it's important if that's the work that you were charged with, that you proceed um, to do that work for those folks and represent them, which is separate from the reparations group. The reparations group, they're doing their work. So, you know, I am confident that you all will keep those two narratives separate, and it's important that you do so for the sake of, of the folks in Amherst. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shabazz. Okay, are there any other members of the public who would like to public comment at this time? Okay, I'm not seeing any other hands. Is it okay to move forward in the agenda? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to move to the members reports. This is the time for members to update us on any work or events that are coming up if anybody has anything they would like to share. Miss um, Pat and then Miss Owen. Actually, I don't have any update. I don't have any event to share. I do want to bring up, as we all know, uh, a copy of the email that Mr. Arbrose had sent to the town manager and um, copy blinded us. And I'm just speaking for myself, nobody else, okay? I am not surprised by our roads email because that has been his pattern in this town. He's a good man, no doubt. But for younger folks and CSW of younger people in this town, all I need to ask you is go back and look at the school committee when he served on that committee, what his role was. That will tell you everything. As a black person, as a black parent, when Mr. R. Rhodes was in the school committee member, I did not trust him enough to go to him to help marginalize students in our med school system because why he aligned himself to the elites of this town, the powerful people of this town, the chamber of commerce, the land owners, the school administration, the white um, school committee members, uh, and members from Ames Wood, the very elite in this town, the political machine in this town, you mass folks, those are the people he aligned with. So his, his email should not come as a surprise to anybody who knows his record in this town, okay? So that's what I wanna say, I am not speaking for anyone, not for CIFA group or CSW or for anybody, but this is my direct observation, my direct experience uh, with all roads. He's a friend that he knows how I feel about him, about his views. He's entitled to his opinion, but we, would, we should not let him distract us. 
okay? We should not let him distract us. We should stay focused because distraction will happen with this work that we're doing. We need to stick together. Do not get upset if you don't know him. That is his record. I've made this known to even my black community. I've made this known to reparation group. If people know what I'm talking about, I had sent a group email to reparation group, which I'm a, a member about my concern around all roads, not supporting the work we're doing. The work we're doing supposed to benefit BIPOC folk. Why would he be the one trying to discredit us, trying to align himself with the powerful people, with the town councilors? Whether or not he wants to run for election, I don't know what his, what, what his uh, purpose is, but don't get, don't get discouraged. It can be frustrating. He's done it before. This is not the first time. He did not help, you know, BIPOC kids who were being overly disciplined in the school system. He was not helpful with special education students. He was not helpful with low income uh, uh, students who are getting um, into a lot of um, issues in the school system. And I can go on and on and on. This is his record. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat, Ms. Owen. Um, I just wanted to share with the group, I know it was in the packet, that um, the CSWG was invited to race, um, race Amity Day this Sunday at four o'clock. Um, Ms. Walker and I, if you are all okay, will write a small speech to kind of talk about our vision, that our vision for the recommendations and the Amherst that we envision, and we'll also make a call to action. I think it's gonna be really powerful and they set us up on the agenda right after they, um, go through the town's proclamation. So if you guys are all good with that. <laughs> and I also just wanted to say, um, I touched base with Ash Hartwell and he really encouraged if you guys are free to come and to join the open forum if you're comfortable. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Can you guys see the invitation on the screen? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Moisten. This is the invitation. Um, you can register for the event, but you do not have to register to attend. So if you guys um, have availability, I think it's um, just from four to five on Sunday. And Brianna and I do plan to be there on behalf of the CSWG. Um, I believe Ms. Ferreira, then Mr. Vernon Jones, then Ms. Bowman. I think, I think Mr. Vernon Jones was before me. Did you want to go before me, Mr. Vernon Jones? Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about uh, Mr. Herb Rhodes. And, and I know, Ms. Pat, obviously, you know, you're saying don't get angry. But I'm, I'm at this point, I am angry. <laughs> because obviously, the first time I was disappointed and sad. <laughs> Uh, but this time I'm angry because after the first one, I, you know, obviously people reached out to me. I re reached out to people and I was really kind of like, and I communicated to him really directly too. Um, as he was through, because when I, I put a Facebook post to say for people to attend the town council um, meeting, you know, when we were going to present to the CSWG, and then he started dialoguing on that, you know, being against, you know, our recommendations. And so at some point, he even said that he had sent an email to us. And then I said in, in the, in my response to him, I was like, that wasn't okay. You didn't even talk to us. You didn't even come in and talk to us in the first place. And then you just go and you send that email to the town manager and to, to the certain members of the town council on the eve of the finance committee. I mean, that was not okay. That was very, negative that was a terrible action on your behalf so I basically told him that and then he goes and he sends this other the second email no I'm 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 really upset with him you know and I'm someone that's very patient <laughs> to a certain degree and and I call him a friend too and he actually did help my son out I have to say that publicly and he knows that he helped my son out when he was in, in, in the town committee because there was an issue he was dealing with um you know years ago in Fort River and he did help out and you know like at least he stood for him. I mean, it still didn't help in the final outcome, um, but he, he did stand up for him in that situation, which I told him I was always grateful for him for that. 
But for him to do this, right, for him to be public, publicly come out against us without talking to us, without reaching out to any member, any of us, and knowing that me and him are friends, and I know he's friends with you, Ms. Pat, and stuff like that, to not have the decency to come and talk to any of us first and just share your opinion and everything, just to keep sending these emails, it's just, just terrible. You know, I, I am angry, you know, and, and you know, I don't, I don't think he really cares at this point, but, you know, because he doesn't understand it as a black man who has been in this in this community, even though I've never really agreed with a lot of his politics throughout the years, but it's a message that he's sending, right? When he keeps on sending these messages towards a group that's majority, you know, BIPOC, and towards a group that's majority female, and he keeps on sending these messages. It's, it, I, you know, for me, I, I'm really upset and, you know, uh, but you're right, I'm not going to be distracted by him. It, we have to stay focused, stay focused on what we're doing. But my thing is, I don't even want to waste my time. I, we wasted time last time, you know, trying to respond to him on the eve of the finance committee when we we're trying to prepare for the finance committee. This time, I, I, I really don't care about responding to him. You know, he's, he's a non-entity at this point for me. Thank you, Ms. Ferreira. Mr. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I just wanted to report that I had an opportunity to have a conversation with a member of the town council this past week, and we agreed it was off the record, so I won't say who it was, but I thought you might be interested to know that at least one member of the town council was very clear that whatever level program we get this year, she's committed to the funding going all the way through F-23 as well, that we won't be, in her mind, when the town needs to make a commitment, not to evaluate the program based on two, two weeks of experience when we're writing the next budget. Um, so I found it helpful that, it, and she was willing to talk to others about that idea. The other issue that she raised with me uh, was that she hoped that the, our second report would address the issue of the lack of trust and fear between the BIPOC community and the APD. Report and she got the information that there's this fear and lack of respect and trust. And she said, you know, CRESS is great. It will reduce the, the uh, contact between BIPOC community and the police department but it won't do anything for uh, the level of fear and mistrust and disrespect. Um, so, you know, again, she didn't speak for the town council and I certainly wasn't speaking for our group, uh, but she communicated an interest in what our group's recommendations are um, about what else can be done to address the, the level of fear and, um, Uh, between the BIPOC community and the APD. I just wanted to report that to us. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Bowman. So um, I did want to comment about um, the letter we got um, from Mr. Erbros and I hate things that I do things that upset people, and I know that I I don't really care. Um, it's very clear. It was very clear to me in that letter who he aligned himself with. Um, and. As much as my initial feeling was anger and like disappointment, it was for me very typical. It was very typical of and you know, I, I do get that, you know. <clears throat> Mm 
You know, there's a saying, you know, it's some like a, a hit dog will bark or yelp or whatever. Um, so if this doesn't apply to you, then you're not gonna have a problem with what I'm saying, but it's very typical of um, certain people of color in this, in this community where they don't wanna step on people's, meaning white people's toes. So what they do is they basically put a lot of effort into disbanding, discrediting, taking apart the voice of marginalized communities. And they do this because they are trying to align themselves with the non-marginalized community. And I'm being very calculated about how I'm saying this. I don't see him out there interacting, working with, involving himself in the communities of people of color who are marginalized in this community. I see him and when I've seen him and even down to when I was introduced to him, had nothing to do with people of color. And we have to remember and we have to recognize that there's always gonna be somebody who's shucking and jiving to keep things happy and peaceful. And that's all I see this as. So I feel that yes, absolutely. We, we, this definitely needs to be moved on from but it needs to be called for what it is. It's a bunch of shucking and jiving to keep the white people happy. That's what it is. He is not in any way, shape or form, acknowledge he's doing just the same thing. He's he is listening to the white people of the community. He is feeling and understanding what, for whatever reason, the white people of this community. He is not looking at what is really going on to the point that someone that from a family member of someone, he actually like really the family member he respects went through it with Amherst PD and he still can't even see why what anything he said is problematic. And this is somebody who, you know, this is a family I know he respects highly, but he can't see that. So, you know, it is really important as we move through and we try to get these, our, get our charges met, get our, get the require, the, the they really should be requirements, but get the voices of the BIPOC community heard and get these charges pushed forward is that we really do need to keep our eyes open for people like him because they are out to destroy us. They are out to make us out, like make our voices unheard because what happens is that white people hear a voice like him and they're like, they belittle us, the people who are actually experiencing it, they belittle us and they look at us and they're like, it can't be that bad because he's not, he's, he, he's not aligning himself with them. He doesn't feel the same way, so it can't be that bad. And the thing is, is that really what he needs to do is sit down and shut his mouth and really look at and hear what his people, what people of color, people who have the same skin color as him, people who have similar skin color as him are saying, look, this is my reality and my reality is valid. And he needs to stop discrediting other people of color when they're saying this is what needs to happen. Because that is exactly how 
systemic racism work? It works because it gets other people of color to dis to try to discredit, you know, uh, voices of people of color who are saying the status quo is not working. The status quo is not fair. The status quo is not okay. And he's like, well, I, you know, he's like one of those like, well, I made it and I'm doing good. So, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't, it, 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 and so we need to be our, we need, even though we need to like not focus on him, we need to be well, well aware of him. We need to be well aware of the thing because everything that we say, he is out there talking to other white people and telling them the opposite. He is telling them that you're doing a good job. That's just enough. That it, which we all know is not. And so we really need to keep that in our the back of our minds as we move forward and try to push the important things that we need to have going forward. We really need, like literally, like literally I saw his letter, the recent one. And the first thing I thought of was Y'all gonna be mad at me for saying this. But the first thing I thought of was the Django Unchained and that black dude who was willing to take a bullet for the white dude. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the he was the like butler or whatever. I can't remember who the actor was, but that's not even the point. But you get where I'm going with it. That's what, that's the vibe. That is the vibe. And I'm, we gotta keep an eye on him. We got to keep an eye on him. We got to be paying attention because he's out there absolutely trying to belittle what we're doing and what we're trying to make happen. So that's just my little two cents. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a personal connection with Mr. Rhodes, but I just wanted to say that we did send out the initial response um, and he did reply to that and did have um, a brief conversation with Miss Owen, I believe, and had wanted to arrange a time where he could talk to us directly. Um, but he was very persistent in it happening on the exact day that he sent the email to us. So it didn't end up happening anyhow. And if everybody else is in agreement that we shouldn't respond again, then I'm okay with that. But I just wanted to make sure that that's what I'm hearing from the group at this time that we don't want to continue to respond to his emails. Um, Ms. Pat? So I just want to um, say a couple of things, just not just, not for him alone, but when coaches speak on behalf of CSWG, it would be nice, you know, to let us know that, you know, you know this happened or this is what we're planning to do. It's not that we're going to like, you know, stop coach yes, but for him to want to talk to 12P and, and it's a great, great thing that you guys, you know, didn't do it because it should have come through us and said, you know, he responded to our, e our email. You guys should have sent that email to all of us. We should have discussed it and said, okay, go ahead and, you know, meet with him or no, we want, you know, him to come to us. Because what this guy is going to do is probably tip what you guys said, you know, your meaning, twist it and use it against, you know, both of you. So he's not to be trusted when it comes to BIPOC issue. I've made that known to everybody. So he's not doing it. He's not coming from a place to want to understand the work we're doing. Obviously he has not taken the time to study all the hard work we put in here based on his email. I can tell that he, he, he doesn't get it. And you know what is very ironic about his email? This is a guy who worked actually in mental health, mental, you know, in disability field as well. And then he's questioning Chris program. Are you kidding me? I mean, 
when I first read his e email, although I wasn't surprised, I was just scratching my, you know, my head. This used to be his field, you know, behavioral health. And I know he has a, a, a very impressive long career and everything, but um, I'm not even going to support inviting him to talk to us. I'm not interested for us to waste our time to respond back to him. This is a letter that he sent to the town manager and he blind copied us. I just wanted to speak my mind publicly today. It will go on YouTube. It will go down if anybody wants to listen. You know, I am known for calling people out. And when I when I go around, it's okay for people to call me out too, but I'm not going to mince words. I'm not going to bite my tongue. People know me for that, that I will speak my mind. I'll call people out. And I think maybe that's why this group is really challenging for some people because they don't realize that by God's making, all of us are very strong willed. We speak our mind, we're strong advocate, we want what is best for our BIPOC community. And it came as a surprise to most people because that's what I'm hearing. They did not know, especially our young folks will be as you know, vocal, powerful, intelligent, and outspoken as they are. And so we're a threat. CSWG is a threat. They want to get rid of us, you know. That's the elephant in the room. It's not because our charge is ending. They want to get rid of us, but guess what? If they get rid of CS, we need BIPOC Affairs Committee. And this group of people should continue. So that's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Okay, um, and so, oh, Ms. Bowman, did you have your hand up? Okay. Um, so at this time, I would like to move to um, the discussion of our press release. If you could pull that up, um, Ms. Moisten, please. Ms. Pat? So has anybody read the, um, the news article? Okay. So what do you guys think? I, I thought the article was fair, even though it's not exactly, um, I wanted the, I was, I was hoping I would read comparison of, you know, budgets from other uh, programs, but, um, but I don't think they published this. Am I on mute? Hold on. No, no, I hear you, Ms. Pat. Sorry about that. Um, which article are you referring to? Um, I think online yesterday, Gazette had um, uh, Scott, had, uh, the, rep uh, the reporter, had written something about our um, press release. Nobody read that? No, no, I didn't. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't read the article itself. I didn't see it either, but I'm, try, I'm trying oh. to pull it up um, here now. The, the thing that I was saying I read was the, what you had sent to us. Yeah. Which I no, thought there's, okay, there's an article actually. I read that yesterday online. I subscribed to uh, oh, okay. online. Okay, yes, I think I found it. It's by the Gazette and it's titled Backers of Police Alternative and Amherst Push for Full Funding. Is there a way to put this, to send it to Ms. Moisten so we can put it on? Yes. So how did he do, uh, Ms. Pat? It, I like it, I like the article. It, it was good? Yeah. Okay, and he didn't kind of twist anything around? <laughs> well, that's his own writing. Um, I, I wanted uh, him to discuss 
to convey that we're not asking for too much money. They, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot better than, you know, it could have been worse. Yeah. Okay. I mean, does somebody want to read it or not? Do we have time? Um, sorry, I was going to send this to Ms. Moise and see if she could pull it up. Okay. Because the vote is coming up on the 21st, right? That's the one right, yeah. Council. Um, I guess the other thing too that I wanted to ask uh, Alicia and uh, Brianna was, were you all able to reach out to the town councilors too? Or not yet? Um, we have not been in conversation with all of the councilors yet. We've had brief conversations with the councilors from, um, sorry, I have to see from this. You found it, okay, thank you. From, With Pat and Shalini, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember which district they're from. Shalini is from five. I think they're from district, district five. five. Yeah, so okay. we've had brief conversations with the counselors from district five. Pat is not from five though. No. Okay, so hang on, let me let me just find exactly who. Um, the two counselors from five are Darcy. Darcy Dumont. Okay, yeah, so and Shalini. And Shalini, yes. I apologize. And can you see the article? Yes, thank you. Please let me know when you want me to continue to scroll. Ms. Moisten, is there a way to like email it to everybody? I can probably email the link to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, why don't we do that to save time? Okay. So what I've done is I forwarded this, um, our press release, uh, release, the one I sent to everybody, to people in my network. I also sent to Indy. Uh, the weekly newsletter that people get on weekend. Um, I'm asking, you know, people to also post mm -hmm. on Facebook as well. So, and, you know, whatever we can do to make our last push, you know, before 21st will yeah. be very helpful. Yeah, and we're still asking to, for the, to, to, to appeal to the town council to reject the budget and to keep CSWG to, well, accept the budget, reject the budget, you know, fully fund our recommendations and keep CSWG in place, right? Because yeah. that's what I want to keep on putting on my um, social media. Yeah. So, okay, good. Um, I would like to also just pose a question to the group in light of Mr. Balkelman's comments from earlier. Um, one of the reasons that he stated that he wasn't interested in continuing the CSWG is because he needed um, a, a long-term standing group. And so um, I heard some conversation about like a successor group or all of those other things. And I'm wondering if we can, if we would be interested in just asking them to make the CSWG the long standing um, committee? Ms. Pat? I think the name itself sounds very temporarily, you know, working group. It sounds like a temporary something. What I would like to request, you know, you know, to the town, town council and also to the town manager is to keep our group that we can toy around a different name. Um, so, multiracial is fine because we have uh, Mr. Ross Venom Jones. So, but yeah, I think one of the things we should do because we have so much work we're doing now is to even come up with what that successor group will do. You know, I, I've written some, some stuff down just to myself, what I think you know, it's lacking in this town. We have a lot of committees, but we don't have any committee that really um, work around or, you know, that focus on BIPOC issues. We're going to have a DEI department, I get that, 
but I think the successor group should also be to support the DEI department, to support CREST program, to push for, for um, um, re redistribution of resources in this town, who are making powers in this town, who are the influencers, you know, how many BIPOC people are on the table making decisions for the whole resident. So our group, then be, that group becomes a watchdog, like pointing out how is this, how, how is the, rev, uh, the town revenue benefiting BIPOC community? You know, how, because we have, the money is not the issue, it's the people making decisions. You know, where is our money going to? It's my interest, you know, in that successful uh, standing committee or whatever they want to call it. Because I don't see, I mean, my dream will actually be for this, for that uh, standing committee to be as powerful as planning board. Beside the town council, the, the next powerful group in this town committee is the town, town planning. They have a lot of power. I would like that kind of power for um, the oversight board and for the standing, whatever group CSWG will be replaced with. So we should not give up, we should keep pushing. We should solicit support from the community. Uh, we're not going anywhere, I think. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Mr. Vernon Jones. So a long term, although maybe that the best way to get there is for the new DEI director to request such a committee. And I think we could play a role in helping that person understand the need for creating a powerful committee. But Alicia, I like your idea in the short term uh, of continuing the CSWG with a new title. Uh, as the standing committee, there's a lot of transition in public safety, community safety alone that's going to happen in this year. And it would be great. It seems a shame to lose the town's, I don't know the town's ever had a committee like this group, and it would really be a shame to lose it. And I wonder if you and Brianna are talking to town councilors, if you could sound them out. I mean, not, not that you need to sell each of them on it, but uh sound them out on what what would they think of continuing this group because i'm not sure the town council is as uh, resistant to our continuing as the town manager is i don't know but it'd be, it'd be good to know that if you can get some sense of i know at least one town councilor said to me so it seems like continuing the cswg is the the simplest thing to do and um you know doesn't require huge budget funds so whether that's widespread on the council or not, I don't know, but it'd be interesting if you can find some of that out in your conversations. Um, absolutely, thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Ferreira. I think Ms. Bowman had her, her hand up. You can go ahead, Ms. Bowman, and I'll go after you. All right. Um, so I actually kind of agree um with Mr. Vernon Jones um like okay so like why couldn't we continue and then and I can't remember the director's title um but the director of the sorry yeah. the DI the DI the diversity yeah, the diversity, diversity inclusion mm -hmm. Okay, so whoever's, whoever's appointed in that position, why can't they potentially kind of, um, kind of take over and facilitating our group continuing? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, because what, what I'm concerned about of what's happening is that you're going to get a whole new flood of people who are going to try to start from square one. And that's one of those things that happens in Amherst. It's like, 
you start a committee and then the committee only has a certain amount of time. And then when a certain amount of time is over, then you get a new committee and the new committee starts all over again. Like this starting all over again, this like re redefining the same thing in diff using different words. I can't remember what it's called in school when you say the same thing over and over again, but you use a different word to describe it. I don't know, Mr. Vernon Jones, you might remember, but um, that's what I feel like. Like we've been you just described it perfectly, whatever the word is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's like, you know, this conversation has been had for 15 plus years at the minimum, you know what I'm saying? Like at the minimum. And, you know, Miss Pat said it from early on. She was like, we had a group, it just dissembled. We had another group, it just dissembled. There were all these groups that just started up and they just disappeared. Like we have a group of people who are committed to doing this work. And it's like, yeah, you, we're just only giving you this amount of time and then we're just gonna disassemble you. You know what I'm saying? And it would be like, I would advise the person coming in as a diversity inclusion person to be like, okay, I'm taking all the people from the CSWG and all of those people are gonna be part of this committee. And then we're gonna, all, we're gonna add more people if need be, but you know, or people wanna be, but, like in the meantime, all y'all people, like even though the quote CSWG is not exactly, you know, it's not has that, doesn't have that title anymore. Oh, we're keeping them running. We're keeping them going because they already have investment in seeing this stuff be taken care of. And, and so it's like, I think part of the issue that we're looking at right now is that, <clears throat> We don't know who this person, this entity is going to be. And so all we're hearing is that we're done as a group, but there's this new entity that's going to come along and, you know, save the world. And we're like, um, no, I'd like to actually see the work that we've been putting in actually come to fruition. So no. So I put it out there in the world, in the universe, that look, if you find yourself in this role, you absolutely need to be saying, hey, I want everybody from the CSWG to be offered to be part of my committee because this committee, you know, they already have a well-standing strong structure. Um, that's just my, like, that's because what I'm thinking, because I keep feeling like, like, it's just this vague, like I keep, we keep getting this vague information, and it's like, it's like, it's like they don't really understand that vague information isn't helpful. It makes me less trusting because I'm already less trusting of the the system, but then to get vague information like and get be sorry. To give me, <laughs> sorry, my five-year-old just ran into the room and was like really excited about a blow-up ball. Um, a beach ball, excuse me, a beach ball. Um, so, you know, but I feel like if we, it, okay, so if Mr. Bachelman came in and was like, look, I'm just, you know, yes, the CSWG is no longer going to exist. But my intent is to put the people from CSWG in this other position, or at least offer them this other position. I think there would be a little more trust in whatever he's trying to do, because I'm still not totally clear. But like, I think there would be a little more trust in it, because it would be like, okay, you're not just dissemble, dis, dis, um, dismembering our work. And we're, we're telling you we're not done. Like here, like, here we go. We're not we're telling you that this work is not done and we're telling you and you're not listening. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just to be devil's advocate, maybe he is listening and maybe that's his intent, but like he did a crappy job of like getting that intent. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to be devil's advocate. I'm trying to be, I also tend to be a relatively positive person about life and please people where, you know, try to be like, look, you know, meet people where they're at and whatnot. And like, like I get, there's a whole lot of brownness that he is not going to get because he's not brown, but like at the same time, um, you know, I do, you know, I do want to be like, okay, you know, maybe like, I want to keep a door open. So I'm not like totally shut off, but like, I am mad. I'm mad. Cause like, if that's what his intent is, he should have been, he should be honest with it and not like leave us, you know, in a place of being like, I don't like thinking the worst of people. Um, and he's really definitely leaving me in a place of feeling the worst of him. So, um, you know, that's, that's my little, that's my little back of the head. Like I, I'm holding this face. I'm hoping, I'm hoping he does a good job. And he says, Hey, you're the, the person, the person, and then you need to make sure these people are involved. And, you know, I'm hoping. So that's just my little, no, I'm not blowing up a ball right now. Um, but I'm no, I'm on a meeting. Um, sorry. Yeah, I, my whole concert, my whole, I'm gone. I'm done. I can't say anything else. Kid distracted me. Thank you, Miss Bowman. Miss Ferreira. So, um, yeah, I mean, I was hearing everyone and I think that obviously a lot of good ideas. My only thought though, is that, that if we wait for the DEI, you know, one, that's going to take a long time. Two, we wanted to take enough time to find a qualified person like Miss, uh, uh, like Dr. Demetri Shabazz uh, pointed out, that we really need to take our time in terms of the job description and making sure that there's adequate and full recruitment and making sure that they that that this director has the coordinator in place and also an administrative assistant because they don't even have that. Remember, we had put that in our recommendations. They didn't put that in. And that that department is going to have resources to be able to do the work because obviously a DI director without resources, without the power, without the wherewithal, it's not going to be able to be effective. So anyway, so that's going to take time. That's basically my kind of bottom line on it. So to kind of wait for the DEI to then put together the structure, my thing is there's going to be a gap. So my my you know and i have i've been kind of consistent with that is that basically CSWG and, and me in the beginning, right? When I got into this, I wasn't even sure. All right. I thought, okay, CSWG, we do it up, up until our, our end of our charge. But it became very clear to me, right? Because since the town and, and, and a lot of these people in power are resistant to putting these things in place, it became very clear to me that there is a need for CSWG to, to continue because if not, these recommendations, all of our recommendations will not be put into fruition. You see what I'm saying? So for me, that's the thing. I don't want there to be a, a gap because we need to just seamlessly continue until, yes, until when and if there's a new, a new group to, 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 to flourish from this, that's fine. But until then, CSWG needs to continue. In terms of the name, I think it would probably be good to kind of still keep a part of the name because people already, you know, uh, um, think of CSWG and they think of us, right? So if we change it too much at this point without all our recommendations being in place, that can also lose some traction. But I hear you like maybe we could do, you know, a, a community safety a standing committee or community safety committee or whatever so that it turns into a committee as opposed to a working group, which just means temporary, right? Um, but but anyway, so so those are my thoughts about it. And I think obviously we need to still keep mulling and, and thinking about it, but I think we want to, um, make sure that we don't have a gap because I, I, I'm pretty sure that if there's a gap, that would be that. <laughs> you know? There won't be a group until sometime six months, a year later or whatever, or if it ever happens. The other thing though too, because I'm seeing the time is um, about the uh, proposal for the consultants. I know we haven't touched base on that. So I just want to make sure that we don't forget to do that. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. I just would like to also hear from Ms. Pat. So I'll be very brief because I know, you know, we're running to like two hours already, almost. So a couple of things. I hear Mr. Ross about having whoever the DEI uh, to establish the group. In ideal world, I would say yes. However, I don't think I've made myself clear enough. 
I feel that a group like ours will be a great marketing tool when we're recruiting to say that it's a strong BIPOC committee, a multiracial group that is really committed in diversity, equity, and inclusion. If I'm a candidate, for example, know about something like that, I'll be, wow, this community is very strong. They're really serious. They want, you know, things like that. I think we should think about it as one benefit is as a recruiting tool. There's no guarantee that we will get people locally. It would be great if we can get, you know, we can hire local people. That would be wonderful. But what if we have, you know, strong candidates from out of state even, who don't know much about AMES, but maybe they will read up for the interview. What if that, uh, that, uh, the candidate that everybody's excited about turn out to be somebody like Off Roads and say, I don't want this group. I'm not creating that. What if this person, you know, is great and come in and is dealing with only white um, administrators around her or him? And then he or she then become part of the status quo in town. There are so many what if, what if, what if. So there should not be any gap in time from CSWG to whatever the another group. I hear what you're saying, Ms. Ferreira, but you know, name is very powerful. The standing committee in my thinking has to encompass many things. Community safety is wonderful, but it should go beyond that. I think adding BIPOC is, is good. Something that people will say, oh, this group, okay. They're all about, you know, they want to make sure that equity is happening, something like that, very, very powerful. Community safety means nothing. You know, I mean, I'm not just dismissing what you're saying, but I think it's something that everybody have to brainstorm and come up with very strong, powerful name for the succeeding uh, committee. Another thing I also want to say is that um, CSWG should definitely be part of the um, hiring process. Like we should be able to submit questions to the DEI candidate. We should have some of our, our representative, two or three people to be part of the hiring committee. We should have huge involvement in the hiring process. I also see the standing committee to also play similar role with the CREST program. I don't think we should have the oversight board, you know, uh, do um, or in a supervisor oversee CREST because police department is a lot of what APD. That will that will overwhelm whoever decide to join that, you know, oversight board. I think they should only focus on APD. The way I see oversight is accountability for APD. I see this standing committee to be named something as a group that will support press program, DEE department, um, multicultural BIPOC center, youth empowerment, all that stuff, ensuring that uh, BIPOC folks are getting, you know, equal share of resources in this town and so on and so forth. That's the way I say it. So we should not assume that DEI that gets hired will uh, in automatically, you know, assemble some, somebody because we're going to have people like off roads that will tell the EEI and said, you know, I've, I've been a black leader in this town for a long time. You know, forget about CSWG. I criticize them. They don't know what they are doing. So we have to have something in place and market our group as a resource to whoever gets this job. Who wouldn't want to apply then if they know that they have support? Because I remember Alisha Boer, the, comes, uh, the um, town com uh, council member who said that we hire people of color, they go. 
Of course, they leave because they don't have the support. Our group will be one of the, um, the standing committee, I hope, you know, will be there to support people of color in high power, or even lo lower power too. I haven't even touched, you know, the school system and everything, but I, I want the level playing field to be the same. I know it can happen. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, and then I just wanted to say a couple of things just in light, because uh, I would like to move to the next thing on the agenda, which, which would be a strategy for the second part of our charge. But it also ties into the next item on the agenda, which is the IFB in the second part. And so I think that like right at this moment, we, we still don't have confirmation that funds will be available for us to use to execute the second part of the IFB. Um, and I'm not sure if everybody had a chance to view Monday's council meeting, town council meeting, um, but the discussion really seemed like that that was not going to be a possibility for us to get funds to complete the second part of the charge. Um, and so I'm wondering if we want to move forward with other aspects until we can get another time to speak with the town manager. I'm hoping he'll be available for our meeting next week, but I, I think we still need a, a bit of clarification as to what exactly we're going to be able to do and exactly how much time we're going to have. Um, Ms. Ferreira? So I guess one, uh, can you, because I didn't hear the Monday meeting, um, so if you could just like say specifically what they said in terms of the budget for that. Um, but even besides that, even though I want to hear what they say, but besides that though, I think we still need to press forward and just kind of, you know, update this um, IFB and, and submit it to the, the, the town manager. And then, like you said, still have a, a conversation with him and be like, this is what we need, you know, as well as what Ms. Moisson brought up last week, which is we still continue to do our work. You know, obviously it's not like we're gonna stop doing our work, we're gonna continue to do it, but still keep pressing for the consultant um, nonetheless, because obviously we saw how important they were for the first part of the charge. So why is it that we wouldn't have the same, you know, um, you know people, uh, available to be able to assist us with the second part of our charge, which is equally as important. And that's what I don't think the town manager is understanding, you know, is that that is equally as important as the first part of our charge. So yeah, my, back to my original question, um, what, what did they say specifically, but hopefully we could still press on. Yes, so um, most of the conversation regarding our recommendations was, was um, surrounding funding for um, our recommendations. And so there was the question of continuing the CSWG, which it, it's a little bit hard because there were no definite answers given to anything. It's kind of this dance around they do whenever a question is asked and nobody actually says the answer to any question. But that leads me to believe that the answer will be no, because if funding is still being questioned and nobody's giving any direction and we're coming to the, to the um, deadline, then I, I'm, it's, very telling of the intentions and the urgency that is behind the actions that are happening and the people that need to make this happen for us because we we can't just make funding appear. Um, and so there's there's been extensive extensive conversation regarding the funding specifically for the press program program. Um, they're not interested in in cutting further cutting the police budget to fund it. So they've been instructed to find funds outside of the police budget specifically to help fund this. Um, there was a lot of talk about how they're only funding it for a half of a fiscal year, be just because of the way that the budget's looking, and then they are looking at funding for next year, and it would be fiscal year 22, which is very complicated because that's when all of the capital investment pro um, projects are due to start. So there actually was a lot of concern about how this funding will even continue for the next fiscal year. Um, Sorry, I took notes on this, but they're kind of all over the place. So I'm trying to um, browse through them and see what's important to your question that you asked. Um, and Brianna, feel free to, to fill in if there's anything that I'm missing here. Um, so, so I'm gathering that you're saying that they wouldn't be um, funding us for the consulting because since they're not gonna be done doing the other. Yeah, so the discussion was just that there's really not any funds available. There was discussion of being able to assess revenue, but then that revenue not being available to use 
for um, our charge until fiscal year 23, actually, if, if there is revenue available for that year for it to be used um, for looking into things like more responders that they don't think that that would even be able to be assessed until fiscal year 23. Um, so yeah, there, there were a lot of, I would highly suggest if you guys have the time to go back and watch the meeting, that one, as well as the, the finance committee meeting where they did pass the motion to instruct the town manager to add two more positions and to also report back with funding options. I think there was a lot of discussion specific to our group that may be helpful for us to know moving forward. And it's kind of hard because it's a, there's a lot being talked about with us not there. Um, there was a lot of questions comparing us to other towns who are doing similar things and they were being answered by uh, Mary Beth. So she answered a lot of questions surrounding the implementation at, um, of the program. And, and who's Mary Beth again? Who's Mary Beth again? Um, so she is part of the implementation team. She, I think, was the director of the senior center. Uh, she has a background in social work. And so okay. I know who yeah. she is. Mm -hmm. the other thing. Okay, she was a social work. Yeah, yeah. Back. So she answered a majority of the questions that came from the town council in regards to our program. Um, there was a lot of discussion about outsourcing the program because of the success in other places, um, because then we would kind of eliminate the, the financial need that would come with the training and hiring if we outsourced it to people who were already trained um, to do these kinds of things. So there was th that was the discussion that was happening um, at the Monday meeting. And so, I mean, it's just very discouraging. I can't lie there. We did have some support from council members. There were um, um, council members who did bring up things like, why is it still being bunched as a social service when it should be community safety? There, there were council members who did voice those concerns, but generally overall, the discussion was that the funding is very scarce and we don't know where we're gonna find it from, where it's going to come from, and also for it to not come from the police budget. Can I say something else that, um, and this is part of the reason why, I'm sorry, I, I apologize to the people I jumped in front of, uh, but I'm afraid I'm gonna forget this. Um, the woman, Sarah, I can't remember her last name, but she actually had to bring the focus back to BIPOC communities because they started getting into really talking about how um, like disability, mental health, like they started talking about those things and which, which even though I know BIPOC community struggles with some of those things, we have to recognize that it moves us out of the, out of the focus um, because when you start talking about disabilities, like when you start talking about homelessness, you know, it, it takes the focus off of what we're dealing with and what we're trying to rectify is systemic racism and how totally disproportionately, you know, BIPOC people, especially Black people are treated within this country. And so one of the members, Sarah was like, look, we're talking about all this other stuff, but this is what we need to be talking about. And she really did try to, re, uh, you know, round it back in and be like, you guys, you guys are taking, you guys are literally taking the focus off of who the focus should be on. Um, so I had to really commend her for that. Um, but one of the questions, another question that, you know, when, when watching this was like listening to a whole, and this is why I said what I said is listening to a whole bunch of white people determine the need of people of color, the need of people that they have, they don't walk in their shoes. They don't really have, it's like telling a person, you know, who has a broken foot, you know, just, just try walking on it, you know? Some people are able to walk. I have a friend who broke her foot and walked on it for a whole month. But not everybody could do that. Not That's not an, a thing for everybody. So I that's one thing that really came up. And, you know, the other pieces with the outsourcing is that who are we outsourcing it to? We're not outsourcing it to a group of people of color. We're outsourcing it to a group of white people. 
So you're going from what feels like an unsafe situation to an other unsafe situation. And that's the that's what I was like really trying to convey because that I that's information that I was like humming in my head when I was watching this. I was just like, oh my God, like you literally want to outsource it to other white people. Okay, so that's it. That's all right. I apologize again to the people I jumped up. No worries, Ms. Bowman. Um, I believe it may have been Mr. Vernon Jones, Ms. Owen, and then Ms. Pat. Yes, no, no worries on jumping in front of me anyway. Um, I think it is on the second part of our charge. I think we should still ask for it. We should put a whole lot of energy in there. I think it's key that we decide we're going to go ahead part our charge as to the best we can and do the parts we think are most important. And I would caution against using the second IFB that we wrote. That was written way back in March. My opinion, it's a little out of date. Uh, and I would ask that we try to combine that with the list of agenda items that I propose that's in the uh, packet today. Uh, and that for next meeting, if there's anything missing in that list, uh, let's get that out in the open and get a list that includes everything we want to do, everything we'd like to make a recommendation on by the And then let's let's get to work on it. We'll ask for help, but I think we need to get to work on it ourselves as best we can. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Owen? Yeah, I just wanna say, um, in addition to everyone's comment about what happened at the meeting, I do think another theme that I kind of saw is a lot of council members are interested in other things besides the resident oversight board. I genuinely think that's the town manager's own agenda, but council members are interested in us looking at other areas. So I think that with me and Ms. Walker reaching out to council members and hoping to meet in person, I think we'll have a, I, I hope it can apply some sort of pressure so that we can get the help to do those things. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Ms. Pat? So couple of things I was going to suggest that the same subgroup that, you know, worked on the IFP part A, if we can get together and do the IF, uh, the, uh, the part B, I agree with Mr. Ross about we should, you know, revisit, like we shouldn't do verbatim what we did in March because some of them, some of them have been addressed a little bit, like the oversight, but there are other, you know, themes that has come up since then. Um, that we should definitely figure out, you know, themes or topics we want to be working on while we still press on getting uh, help uh, with consultant. One of the things I was thinking is complaint process. Um, when people are wronged by the police, what is the process? At least it's something that we can start working on. I mean, that's a, a, a whole, you know, huge in itself, but um, we shouldn't be discouraged because they say there's no money to pay for another consultant, just because it ha you know, it's something that will benefit BIPOC. We should not buy into what they're saying. We should just, you know, create that and submit to the manager and said, you know, this is what we need help with, you know, is my thinking. In terms of nonprofit, and I know this would directly impact my business, but I do business with all these people. Let me ask you guys, if you have, you know, so, you know, when, when, when the town puts out the press position, guess who is going to lose? Some of these nonprofit people because some of their staff will prefer working for Crest. So it will make sense that some of them may be suggesting to the town that they can, they can contract out Crest so that they will continue to uh, marginalize bike work folks that, they, that work for them. So they don't want any competition. They're even struggling with staffing as we speak. 
you know, with the COVID and everything. And then the town council is even thinking about contracting out for the sake of money. Are you kidding me? When it comes to BIPOC stuff, all of a sudden there is no money. What, what about the free cash, the extra? There is money, it's the will. It's who, who is making the decision. So I will not support nonprofit taking over Crest. Like Tashina stated, it's like from police that we're afraid of and don't trust to white led organizations, service net, CHD, and so on and so forth. I mean, we just wasted our time for several months doing this work only for the all white, almost all white town council and white town manager. And the people, the person you guys are ignoring that has a lot of power and you don't, and you don't, you may not want to, I don't want to say that, the finance director. He did the similar thing with special education, okay? When it comes to marginalized groups, this finance director will say we don't have any money because marginalized group will not do anything to him. Guess, you know, people he answers to, people that looks like him who are powerful. This guy has made millions from his salary to us and then all of a sudden there is no money to do BIPOC stuff. We shouldn't only be hammering on the town manager and the town council. The finance director has incredible amount of, of, of power in how money is dispensed in this town. I know so because I have children in that field. Being a finance direct, director is a big deal. And this guy has no interest in backpack people or special education people. I know what I'm talking about. So we should not just focus our, our attention to only town manager and the, and, the, and the town council is the point I'm trying to make. All of a sudden there is no money, but they have you know, cash re reserve. He made mistakes when he was uh, presenting, oh, I forgot about this uh, uh, item. I forgot about this, I miscalculated. But he doesn't miscalculate when it comes to a uh, uh, project that involves uh, powerful people, golf course and other stuff. I'm done. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, so I agree. I mean, I think we should absolutely continue our charge. I just wanted us to keep that in our minds, the types of conversations that are happening, just moving forward. Um, because I think it matters because it impacts our work a lot. And it's it's been hard for me as a co-chair because I haven't always been able to be at the meetings. And then I feel like I'm missing really important things that makes it hard for me to like guide these conversations in a way that I feel like I should, if I don't know what's happening on it within the town council and with the finance committee and with the town manager, because they are having a lot of conversations surrounding our recommendations that we are not present at. And so I just want to make sure that we keep that in mind because a lot of the questions that we ask Mr. Bockelman in these meetings are questions that they have, he has already answered to the town council in me, a meeting that happened a couple of days ago, but then he'll sit here in this meeting and not give us an answer. So I think it's just important for us to, if we can view them, if not to catch up when we have time, or if one member could just report back to everybody else, just keep us in the loop as to what's happening because it is informing our work moving forward. Um, and then I just wanna also go back to Mrs. Pat's suggestion of having the subcommittee who worked on the first um, IFB get together. I think that would be um, a good suggestion if we want to just put that out to Mr. Bockelman. I also think that um, Mr. Vernon Jones suggestion from earlier and seeing if we can just get three low bids for the most important things that we need done rather than going through the entire process again um, would be another good idea if that's something that we can get that document together and get that out to Mr. Bockelman as soon as possible, I think would be in our best interest. Um, and then I'm not, I, if you can remind me, Ms. Pat, who was on the subcommittee, I think it was- It was actually you. Yeah, myself, you, and, myself. and okay. And so, we'll just do the same pattern, the same thing that we did in part A and just like update, you know, the stuff, I think. And I think Mr. Ross has done most of the work. I mean, the, the stuff in our packet right now that I see, yeah. 
Yes, and I think also at last week's meeting, we did ask um, the group members to just take a look back at the um, IFB that we had written before and see if they had any suggestions. So if any group members have other suggestions that they didn't get to voice, if you could please um, send those out to Ms. Moyston, Ms. Moyston, so that you can get them to us. Is that how, how it should go, Ms. Moyston? Yes, okay. So, Ms. Ferreira? So I guess, yeah, how, so what's the deadline so that I know, because yeah, you know, me with my job, you know, things get really so what's the deadline so I know like by when, so you all will work on kind of like a draft, send it to us, and then you, you uh, will give you all feedback or like you said, or do you want us to send you stuff right now so that you can put in a draft in terms of what we think would be important to include? I guess, what's, what's the way you want it? It will be both. You'll send us, suggest, you know, what you would like included, and then we, we put out draft. You guys take a look at it for your yeah. But, okay. Are we trying to do this so that it's it's into uh, Mr. Bachman by next meeting? I think that would. I, well, I think ideally, if that's possible, if we could get that to him, so that at the next meeting we can have a discussion or a brief suggestion to him that he start working on that. Just also um, with respect to the time. Yeah. And I don't know how much time it will be if he needs to actually locate funds that are not available. How much time he would need to do so. Yeah. So I, I just think as soon as possible. What do you think? Um, Mr. Vernon Jones? What do you think? My suggestion is that we ask everyone to look in the next couple days at the second IFB proposal from back in March and at the list of agenda items that I sent out and which is in the packet for today and send us no later than Sunday night um, anything you think needs to be added or any way you want to elaborate on anything that's there uh, or if there's anything you there you think really shouldn't be considered. If you could send all of that to us by Sunday night, then we could meet hopefully sometime Monday morning or sometime Monday uh, and put together a final document which could be both uh, a request for uh, consultant services and sort of a guide to what are the topics that we think our group needs to address uh, in its second report. Sounds good. I also am in favor of that suggestion. Does that sound good with the other members of the group? Okay, so we would be looking. Sorry, so you would get us, a, a, or you would um, put together, after we send what it is that we want in it, then you would um, send something out when? So I think what Mr. Vernon Jones said, correct me if I'm wrong, was that uh, if you want to use the second RF, um, IFB that we already have written just as a base, um, make suggestions to pull or add from there and send that to us um, by Sunday night so that we can meet Monday and then we'll put those together and send that back out to the group. Okay. And then we'll discuss that on Thursday? Yes, I think that would be the idea. Um, Ms. Moyston? So I know it's not a full quorum, but I usually post sub because it's a subcommittee and I have to post those. There's not enough time to post that for Monday morning. I can post it for Tuesday morning. Can we do it by email like we did before, like sentence to you and then you'll forward it to three of us? Or do you guys write I do Tuesday? How is your schedule, Mr. Ross and uh, Alicia? I have a, a meeting, like a standing meeting on Tuesday mornings, but if we could meet like closer to the afternoon or another time, afternoon. I could probably figure out a Tuesday. I just can't do morning. I could do midday day, Tuesday. I can do that too. Midday, okay. you said? What time, midday? Well, Mm -hmm. Alicia, when are you available? Um, I'm available after 1030. You want to do 11 on Tuesday? Yes, that will work for me. That's fine. That works. But my suggestion was that people not only look at the original B, but also look at the list of agenda items that's in today's packet that mm -hmm. will be thinking about combining both of those. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, did you say 11 or 11.30? 11. 11 a.m., yes. Thank you, Ms. Royston. Okay, so I think that is great. And then the, we have two things left on the agenda um, for tonight. One is town forums. And then the last thing is the summer schedule. Um, I'm wondering if we still wanted to discuss the summer schedule just because um, I know that we did talk about having, having an extension um, to, to get our materials to the town council by the 16th of August, but I wasn't sure if that was like a final firm decision or if we were still kind of in discussion about that extension. Discussion um, in discussion. Yeah, I think it's still sort of in discussion. So I didn't know if we wanted to just move that to next week's agenda still, just because we don't have a definite answer on when our group will end. Well, I think that's that's the discussion. I mean, the only thing is that I guess what we what we could put for the next agenda is that if we can get an extension beyond uh, September first, that's what we would prefer. So I, that would be the first question. If not, then August sixteenth is when we'd have to get the recommendations in, so we can we can uh, present to the town council on the twenty third. But I think we need to lead with the we want an extension beyond the first. Okay. Yeah. I agree, and then I. Um, and so I didn't know if you guys wanted to go over a summer schedule or if you just wanted to continue meeting weekly. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I say meet weekly and then whoever can't meet, like I know I won't be able to meet a couple of times during the summer, um, then we don't, you know, you don't meet. But I know Ms. Pat, you answered every two weeks. So I don't know, it's more the will uh -huh. of the group. Yeah, so that way people will, you know, have a breather, you know, still be able to, you know, I don't know about other people, but if people think we should still continue with weekly, whatever the majority says, I just feel like summer, that is the feeling of, you know, summer, relax, you know, you're still working, but it's, I don't know, vacation time for people and stuff like that. So people coming over, whatever, yeah. What do, what do other folks uh, think? So I, I still say weekly and then take your time. Ms. Pat was thinking maybe a, a summer schedule. What do other folks think? Ms. Owen? If we can get an extension, I think we could do every other week, but just because we're on such a short timeline, I think we have to do it every week. Um, and we can just catch each other up for those of us that can't meet when they're out of town or, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think my, <clears throat> my agreement is with Brianna, if we can get an extension or, or if there is going to be a decision to make the CSWG a standing committee, then I think we can take our time and take breaks. But I think if our deadline is really August 16th, that we should just continue meeting diligently weekly, if possible. And um, of course, we respect and honor if somebody needs to be absent, and we can fill them in. Um, Miss Pat? So here comes again, that troubles me. Um, so the the powerful people are telling us wrap this up when we when we ask you guys to join. This is supposed to be temporary. Wrap it up. I have problem with that, and maybe because you know, that's why I'm self employed. Uh, that doesn't jive with me. I can't be on other people's uh, uh, time. I shouldn't say that. Um, let me rephrase. But um, they shouldn't be giving us that deadline. We want to do our job thoroughly. And the town council means twice a month. And sometimes if there is like additional meetings they do. So I think if we have July and August every other week, it's not too much you know, to be asking for. We can do some extra homework. So when we come into weeks, then we have more work, you know, more to report and to do. But if people feel like weekly, I will I will attend. It's not that I won't attend. Wherever I, wherever I am, I will be able to um, join. So, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I regretfully think we need to meet weekly unless we get a an extension. Okay. Try to be more disciplined about really limiting meetings to two hours or less. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Ms. Moyston, did you have a hand up? 
Yep. I just want to say that weekly or at least bi-weekly seems would probably be the best when you start meeting even sometimes bi-weekly the work gets slowed and you guys have so much work and you you're moving so fast right or you're keeping up with it the other committees are take a long time to get stuff done because they don't meet as frequently right like they have to wait until the next meeting that's just all thank you miss moiston miss bowman yeah i also regret regrettably say that we should be meeting um I kind of have it in my head is if I ever do anything besides work this summer, I would make time to be at this group um, because I know the work needs to get done and I'm tired of it not getting done. So I feel like if we lose our momentum, then we really risk it not getting done or coming to what we envision it to be. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Um, so if it's okay with everybody, I think we can just continue meeting on a weekly basis. And if there comes a point where we are granted an extension, then we can reassess at that point. Um, but I think uh, as a great, uh, yes, Ms. Ferreira. I thought we were going to just like bring that up next week and, and say, hey, we want an extension beyond the first and see what Bachelman says, right? And, yes. you know, what the process. And then obviously if he, if, if we get what it is that we need, then we can make a decision at that point. I think we still need to press with that. Um, but yeah, for now, until we, we get that response, um, a firm response, we keep meeting weekly. Yeah, I agree. I think that that's um, a good plan for moving forward. Um, and so since we're talking about weekly meetings, can we just talk about next week's meeting date? Um, is everybody okay to meet next Thursday? Are we going to continue to have the meetings Thursday at 530? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Miss Bowman, do you still have your hand up? No? Okay. Okay. So um, our next meeting date... Sorry, I'm going to find my calendar. Will be um, June seventeenth at five thirty p.m. Miss Pat. So I have a suggestion. Could we have a subcommittee of two people to start working on what the standing committee charge would be, like a proposal that we can submit to the town manager? Just don't call it a subcommittee, right? <laughs> oh, sorry, not. Just don't. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> can, we have two, can, can we have two people or one person? <laughs> to you? Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know, I'll be curious what people also think about the standing committee, like, you know, you know, what the charge would be. Because we need to think proactively because there are other groups who want to step, step in, in our, you know, once we're out. I know that are very strong um, uh, equity group, social justice group, whatever you want to call it, who wants to be part of the town. Okay, so we're not the only one. There's a, a lot of advantage to be part of the town. You have good platform to make your case. So we're competing with other groups. Let's put it that way. So we need to, you know, come up what we think the what we what we envision to be the charge of the standing committee. So who wants to volunteer on that? Who wants to help me? <laughs> I can do that with you, Miss Pat. Huh? I, I would be willing to if nobody else. Um... Okay. okay. Can you, uh, guys, you guys give us two weeks to report back or next week? Do you guys want it next week? I'm sorry, but I'm going to need to go tonight. Huh? I'm sorry, but I need to leave okay. uh, tonight. Uh, but uh, I love this group. Let's keep going. You're freezing. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. Thank you. Yeah. 
this would be fine. We wouldn't need to have it for next week. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I, I think it's a good idea to get started on because that's um, one of the larger questions at hand, it seems like. Um, but I think that um, there are other things that we should have available for, for next week and then we can look at that for the following week. Um, okay, and so um, I just wanted to see, is there anything any other members would like to um, discuss that we didn't anticipate within 24 hours of our meeting? No? Okay, and so with all of our business, uh, yes, Ms. Ferrer? Just to think about, um, I had been the one that had put town forms on there, just to think about that if we are gonna do town forms, we probably need to select dates so that we can put that, especially with vacation schedules and stuff like that, it'll be important to kind of think about that. But obviously we don't have to do it now. Just wanna put it in everybody's mind. Yes, thank you, Ms. Ferrer. I'm sorry I skipped over that one. So I think um, my idea was that uh, we would be a little bit in a better position to discuss that next week once we have the IFB written out and we know exactly what we're going to be asking for a different party to do, then we can decide, hopefully. So if that's okay with you, Ms. Ferrer, I'll add that to the agenda for next week. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so with all of our business complete tonight, I would like to move to adjourn the meeting. I second it. Okay. Do we have to do a roll call, Jen? Okay. You don't, you don't uh, have to, you can just say adjourn. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ms. Moisen. Tonight's meeting is adjourned. I will see you all next week. Thank you so much for your time. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Bye everybody.